Okay, so I'm going to do a quick build review uh, with a little bit of gameplay showcasing the Alpha Bridge shotgun build. Alright, uh, I'm just going to, you know, as a little disclaimer, I don't like this build. I have not achieved great results from it. Uh, I'm, I'm positive that there's a better way to min-max this build, but I'm just going to go over pairing two shotguns with Alpha Bridge 4-piece. You know, some of the possible combinations, theory craft a little bit because my build doesn't perform as well as I would like. Uh, but I'm going to you know, look forward and theorycraft some, some better combinations of gear that might actually let you achieve something spectacular. I know that there's a lot of potential with this build. Um, one of my friends, Uzi Slays, has achieved fantastic results. Uh, he can absolutely decimate players, uh, enemy players in DZ that is, and you know it functions very well. My build does not function all that well. I mean, it, it, is, uh, it works, it's okay, but it's nothing that you're really going to say, oh wow, you know, I really want to... Uh, achieve that but I will actually look forward in theorycraft and this build does have the potential and I'll talk about that uh, the only reason I'm actually doing a build review before I've actually completed the build to its full potential is because you know it's very easy to, uh, to to look forward and to think of these things and you know I can talk about them now so that people can build towards the better end result in the future so I'm gonna go and talk about the four piece alpha bridge uh, I have a basic chest piece armor great major attribute you always want to roll that exotic damage resilience that's kind of nice i would prefer to have two final measure if i'm going to be using this um but you know it, it works and it does help lessen the blow of sticky bombs i have a decent amount of toughness 464,000. Um, my base health pool is actually 122,000. i'm pretty much safe from from sticky bombs with this um it's not like i'm super super protected if someone really has a super maxed out sticky bomb when i have debuffs on me as well like the sentry stacks stuff like that i can get killed by it but most of the time, almost every single situation, I'll be totally fine. So that's the chest piece, uh, just to take a quick look again. Ammo, ammo capacity and pulse duration. Pulse is going to be uh, a big skill for this build, so you're going to be wanting to be using that. And skill attributes on your gear that augment pulse in a, in a positive way are going to be really helpful. So then I look at the mask. I have skill power on that. That's to help my pulse be, you know, more potent. So when I'm using it, I'll have, you know, more, more critical hit chance and damage, especially with a shotgun where you're going for this super burst damage, you know, high single shot damage. When you land most of those pellets, especially on a headshot, you want to be doing just a massive chunk of chunk of damage, uh, stripping away their health pool as fast as possible. This is a stamina mask to help me achieve the toughness that I have. Has skill power, first aid ally heal. That's nice. Uh, something to do with pulse might have been better, but it works. Uh, the mod in it is a uh, prototype firearms mod with critical hit chance. That could be skill power. Uh, a lot of people have given me feedback on some recent builds that say you know skill power is more effective than critical hit chance in the firearms mod slot. You know if you pair that with 1500 skill power it's you're going to get more pound for pound than you do with critical hit chance uh, i do believe this is true but i'm working with the mods that i have right now i'm also you know doing this build now instead of waiting until i have every single piece of perfect gear because i want to approach this from a more realistic perspective for people that may be you know getting the content you know very soon especially for ps4 users even though i am on xbox one especially for you know more casual players who don't have the time to farm uh, a whole ton of gear you know really quickly and grind it out for hours and hours and hours if you're really only playing a couple hours per night uh, or, or less than that you're not going to have all this you know this giant pool of gear to choose from and so it's it's really about making the best uh, of what you have so that's what I'm trying to do as well as you know show the, the build and theory craft for the future so moving on to these alpha bridge knee pads critical hit damage that's very nice with the shotgun again for that bursty chunk style build they're a stamina piece, you know, give me more toughness. I could very well switch that for a firearms piece if I really wanted to. Uh, this is another stamina piece, but um, switching that over to firearms would give you more burst damage. You know, it would make you a little bit squishier, but it's, it's a trade-off that if the user prefers that they can make, and it will actually have a good impact on, you know, damage versus uh, stamina and you know, the performance of the build overall. So the skill attribute, first aid ally heal. Again, this makes me kind of, you know, I fulfill a niche in the support role as well because I have two pieces of gear with first aid ally heal. So my, uh, if I were to use combat medic or something like that, and if I do use, you know, heal skills on my, on my allies, when I am healing them, it's more effective. That's very nice. Uh, when you're in a squad specifically. Looking at the gloves, I got really lucky with these two stack gloves. I know it's a glitch. Uh, it's been confirmed by the developers. But at the same time, I don't know if they're going to retroactively nerf these. So I may have gotten extremely lucky, and I may get to keep these double stack gloves, you know, uh, after they change it. They may not drop anymore in the future, but I might get to keep them. If that's confirmed any other way, please let me know. As far as I know, that's the case. But if they are going to, you know, at their own discretion, choose one of the stats to strip away and put to a major attribute, if they are going to actually correct all of the different dropped gloves that are currently out there, uh, that's 
seems like a massive amount of coding that I wouldn't even want to begin to think about. Uh, but if they are going to do that, I would, I would actually immediately ask them and say, why are there so many broken elements of your game? If you're able to do that and go into every player's inventory and, and fix pieces of gear that drop through RNG, uh, it, like individually, then why are you not, uh, or even just remove them from the game? If you have the ability to do that, why didn't you put your time and your, your resources into preventing some of the game-breaking, you know, errors that have happened in the past um, and some of the major glitches? But, you know, that's a discussion for a different time. So I like these gloves. They're a critical part of the build. They allow me to achieve as much firearms and stamina as I have, but they may be nerfed in the future. So prioritizing something like stamina or uh, firearms individually, and if you have gloves that have just one of those major attributes, that'll be good, and it will actually give you a more realistic feel of how the build actually functions. So then moving on, I just have the two best pieces of gear that I have right now in these slots uh, to fulfill this purpose. This one right here, Hunter's Faith Backpack, has a great, great firearms roll. Um, and with the firearms mod and the critical hit chance, it comes up to just a really spectacular number and it has 20% critical hit damage. Again, to add to that uh, bursty style chunking build. Um, that's the reason I'm using it. I'm not using it for any two-piece gear set, you know, bonuses. You could use easily Sentry's Call, give yourself some more headshot damage. You could use two-piece Final Measure, give yourself some extra p protection from exotic damage, uh, exotic damage in terms of sticky bombs, in terms of grenades and flamethrowers. That could be very viable. You could use two-piece Blind to make your pulse even better. Uh, so those are some of the, the options that you have pairing with the four-piece Alpha Bridge when doing a double shotgun build. Looking at my, my holster, this is just a great roll on a blind uh, holster. Again, my best stats has a high firearms roll. That's one of the main reasons why I prioritized it. Uh, 268, it has uh, a very low stamina roll for what I would wish it to be. Something in the higher 700s would be ideal, but that works, 694 is fine. It has a good uh, electronics roll and a really great armor roll, which is allowing me to hit the armor cap and uh, achieve uh, the maximum mitigation you know, with the build without having to you know, stack mods into it. I could switch to this final measure holster, very similar stats, uh, and work towards the two piece uh, with you know pairing my backpack. So if I were to switch to this final measure holster and then take the backpack and switch over to something like this, you know I would lose a large chunk of my of my damage because I would be losing the critical hit uh, and in exchange for armor. And I really don't need the armor. I would gain quite a bit of toughness and I would be protected from sticky bombs. So overall, it may be a, a swap that you want to make, but for the the purposes of how I'm going to use this build right now, it's not one that I'm going to do. Uh, that's a that's an overview of the gear that I'm using the two guns that I'm using you know with the the four-piece alpha bridge So I get all six talents are this military m870. This is a 204 This could be a much much better roll with a 229 version. You'll have much more base damage uh, It'll be you know more effective all around uh, This one here has deadly capable and brutal I would much prefer capable to a be in the third slot and B uh, be competent Capable is not something you're really going to take advantage of with a shotgun build, but the, you know the main element of this gun that I'm taking into consideration is the fairly high base damage for a 204, especially it's a great roll, but for a 229 it would be on the very low end, uh, and deadly and brutal, both on the same gun. That's very nice. The second gun I'm using, right down here, this Super 90, uh, has decent base damage for a Super 90, lower than the M870, and you're always going to want to be prioritizing the M870 if you're going for super high single shot damage. If you're going for marking, if you do choose to run, you know, sentries or something like that, and you're, uh, you know, differing from the Alpha Bridge build, you can run the the Super 90 with a better rate of fire. You can run the SASG. You can run something with a better rate of fire so you can get off those marks quicker. But I am using the Super 90 just for its talents. I have responsive, unforgiving, and competent. Now, competent gives me an increase of 13.5% damage 10 seconds after using a skill. Responsive, 13.5% damage when closer than 10 meters. So if I am closer than 10 meters and use a skill, for instance, pulse. Not only will I get 27% increased damage, I will also gain uh, the critical hit chance and damage from Pulse. And if I were to be uh, in my second health segment or my third health segment, I would gain either 10% or 23.5% respectively. So this weapon right here, I'm using it because of the, the three set of talents that stack uh, percent weapon damage, okay? Percent damage overall. And when paired together, they can equal some, some really high numbers. Um, I still don't feel that the build performs as well as it could. I, again, I haven't min-maxed all the pieces, but it doesn't perform exactly how I would hope. I'm not one-shotting players or anything even close, but it's okay. And it is a fun, you know, differ. It differs greatly from the style of SMGs and assault rifles, which a lot of people are using. Um, the metagame right now seems to have kind of shifted towards a five-piece sentry and reckless or a five-piece sentry and savage 
both of those with a shotgun. That seems to be a very common build. This is an alternative to that that has a lot of potential. In my eyes, more potential, but it's more difficult to achieve uh, the end game results of a one-shotting build. My friend Uzi Slays has a really great version of this. If I can get the stats from him, I will do a review of that build, in fact, because I've watched him take out players in one shot. He's one-shotted me before. It's a very effective build. Um, this is a lesser version of that, but it's still functional. So I'm going to take a look at my abilities and talents. I use Pulse with the damage modifier. Um, when you're using this, you're going to be proccing competent, getting the weapon damage, also getting the chance and the critical hit damage. And overall, it's just going to make you much stronger, you know, make you more bursty. For talents, I've differed it a little bit from what I, um, what I normally run, especially in a squad. I'm using critical save, you know, to give myself some extra mitigation. That's nice. That's not going to change from most of my builds. Uh, I recommend that on pretty much every build. I'm using tactical advance. You won't actually see me use it in the video, uh, in the gameplay that I show. But when you run cover to cover, it's just another mechanism to stack percent weapon damage. Now, I have this theory that I haven't really been able to, to make appear in reality yet but it's a theory that if you stack enough percent weapon damage bonuses on top of each other i'm talking six eight nine ten even if you can stack enough on top of each other you will just become a monster that can absolutely one shot every single thing that you come across and i'm not talking just players i'm talking npcs as well now i have yet to achieve it but i'm, I'm thinking there might be this snapshot perfect storm type build where you're in smart cover with the weapon damage from that you're getting competent responsive unforgiving if you're in the last uh, health segment you've proc tactical advance um all these different bonuses that are achieved and you can hit a target for just so much more than the developers ever intended i haven't made it work yet but i'm on i'm on the road to doing so so you know take it with a grain of salt this isn't a perfect build that's finished but it the theory is there on the move uh makes you more tanky i use it in pretty much all my builds that's going to remain unchanged and then one is none now for shotguns this is an interesting skill one is none can increase your damage drastically if you're using an smg or an assault rifle it still performs that purpose but when using a shotgun if you land a headshot that's eight different pellets which all have the chance to actually activate the one is none talent and if you land a headshot fully it's almost a guaranteed chance it's almost a hundred percent it's nearly statistically a hundred percent that you will not consume the bullet and this means the entire shell that you fire not just the pellet so if you can keep landing headshots with a shotgun, you can essentially fire forever. Now, I don't have the accuracy to do that, not even close, but having one is none on the build, especially for someone that is more accurate than I am and has better control of their reticle, then this is going to be a really good talent to run. So that's why I'm factoring it into the build and talking about it. So I'm going to throw it over to some gameplay right now. I'm going to talk over it. It's not very impressive. I need to warn you, if you're, if you're looking for kill montages and things like that, you're not going to find that here. Um, in fact, it's, you know, it's kind of a letdown in terms of that, but the build does function and I am going to talk about, you know, the benefits, the drawbacks and things like that and why I do or don't particularly think this build is good or I like it very much. Okay, so here we are, uh, we're running up on some rogues. We're going to end up fighting a lot of players here. It's a good showcase of how the build performs. Um, I must again, you know, give you a disclaimer. This build is not perfected. It's not perfect. As you can see, I'm doing good damage, but I'm not doing anything, you know, that you're going to, you know, your jaw is going to drop at. It's not like that. The build is not perfect in that sense. Some people using, you know, Savage or Reckless or these other percent weapon damage bonuses um, are going to achieve better results. Uh, I know there are some people out there with Sentry and uh, with uh, Savage Gloves, with Reckless, you know, these metagame five-piece Sentry builds that are achieving, you know, better results from the shotguns. But I feel like I'm specifically going to cover Alpha Bridge for this one. I will be making a metagame build uh, based around five-piece Sentry and a, a, sh a shotgun, whether it's an SASG for marking or a, a M870 for just high base damage. Uh, it, it really is a build that's kind of taking over the Dark Zone. In my eyes, it's nowhere near as good as the Deadeye 4-piece at all. Not even close. But a lot of people are using it. They, it. It's something that's kind of gone viral in the Dark Zone. A lot of people, I see it more and more often. And some people, a lot of people I encounter are actually using it more effectively than I am here. But I know that the, the Alpha Bridge is also a viable way. Uh, especially because you don't actually need the five piece pairing um, with sentry you know you don't need the five pieces to get the extra headshot damage with the alpha bridge you can activate six talents but you can also pair it with two other either gear sets or reckless and savage now i don't have the pieces to achieve that but keeping in mind that alpha bridge as you can see there i just absolutely whiffed those shots that could have been something very spectacular but i wasn't able to make it work now uh with alpha bridge again i don't have the right pieces to make it work but, you know, pairing Reckless and Savage with the other four pieces of your gear having Alpha Bridge will allow you to take advantage of a lot of the mechanics that are 
uh, allowing this metagame build to be strong uh, while also having six gun talents, which is very nice. Um, I will be doing an augmented build review and update of this build in the future when I've, you know, got it to perform much better. But as you can see, I'm plenty tanky enough to survive whatever's thrown at me. I can tank multiple players at any one time. That seems to be what the metagame has kind of become. Most people are capable of surviving a long time out in the open, you know, fighting other players. As you can see, I do decent damage. Um, if I had landed a headshot there instead of just a body shot, probably would have achieved much better results. But at the same time, I do significant damage. You know, his overheal definitely tanked all of that. And in the end, I'm not. It's no, it's nothing jaw dropping. You know, I I've, I've said it in the beginning and uh, multiple times throughout. It's not something that you're gonna really, you know, wake up and say, oh my god, I need to run that four piece alpha uh, shotgun build that I saw in upper echelon gamers. It's not fully perfected or min-maxed, it's just an idea, it's a build that I'm currently working with, and it's more just for informational purposes to see. As you can see, I finally, it did perform there. I did get significant damage on a player, you know, maybe his medkit was on cooldown, something like that, but it did end up that I, that I did kill him, and it was a, a good showing of what the build can do when, you know, when your aim isn't potato like mine, and when you actually functionally hit the players in the right, you know, spans of time in the right areas, especially if you're landing headshots, this build can perform. But anyways, it's, as I was saying, it's not something you're going to uh, say, you know, I have to go build that right away because of how amazing it is. It's more of a theory craft, you know, four-piece alpha bridge. It's to show all the different talents you can use with, with your gun. It brings it from just the gear, just, uh, you know, having five-piece sentry, for instance, with savage gloves or reckless. Uh, it turns it, now, if I had hit the shot, I actually would have finished him there, but my, my buddy Jay Castro did. Uh, it turns it from just a gear set style of, you know, uh, mixing and matching, you know, customization. It turns it to actually the weapons are involved in that and having six more elements of the build where you can, you know, mix, match, and change things, which I think is really cool. And that's why I do insist on using Alpha Bridge a lot of the time over something like Sentry. So as you can see, we've achieved, you know, rank four Rogue. Nothing really spectacular. We've kind of driven off. There's a large cluster of players who all kind of split off in their own directions and did their own thing. It worked, you know, fairly well. Um, I'm actually going to cut it here. We went on to survive this this manhunt, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly. We did kill a few more players. You know, we didn't really camp outside any checkpoints or anything. We kind of roamed within the same two block radius, uh, and it ended up working really well. So I'm going to cut it there. As always, you know, thank you for supporting the channel. I actually have one announcement at 2,000 subscribers. If we can get there, uh, I feel blessed to have made it as far as I have. I'm actually going to do a, a t-shirt. I used to be a graphic designer. I'm going to make, a, 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 to the best of my ability, a really cool t-shirt with our something like our logo, maybe a crest. Uh, it says Upper Echelon Gaming. Um, and I'm going to sell that with uh, funded by Teespring, you know, the crowdsourced t-shirt funding campaigns. And all of the money that I make from that, first things first, I'm going to offer as big a discount as the printers will allow me to offer so that the shirts are printing basically just for the cost of the ink. And then I'm going to give that discount code in the description of one of our videos to all subscribers so you can get, uh, hopefully, a super, super cheap shirt that has a really cool crest of the, of the gaming channel on it. And it will be, you know, uh, a symbol of support. And the second thing is, any, any profits at all from that are going to go directly towards purchasing a really good microphone. I know a lot of people have complained about my mi microphone and brought it to my attention that there's some white noise, there's some hissing. I'm working with the best that I have. There was a really unfortunate situation with AdSense. You know, we overcame that. <clears throat> Excuse me, we overcame that. But, you know, moving forward, uh, we have to, you know, amass the funds to upgrade our equipment. And once we've done so, the quality of the recordings and, you know, the speed at which I can pump them out even is going to be much, uh, much higher. So uh, stay tuned for that. When we get to 2,000 subscribers, I will be doing that right away. Uh, and I'm actually working on the design now. It's not finished, but when I, when I have that done, I'll, I'll show it up on screen at the end of the video as soon as it's completed and we hit 2,000. And hopefully, if you guys are interested, you know, you can buy that and support. So, as always, uh, thank you for watching. Thanks to my subs who moved the channel with me. Thanks for the support. And if you have a better build than this, please post it in the feedback. I'm not claiming that this is the best build in the world. I'm just going to call it a fun build in the description. Um, it's a fun build. I like it a lot. And if you have a better build with better results, you know, with Sentry or Striker or Savage or Reckless or anything like that, please post it. Give me some feedback. Let me know. And as always, have a nice day.